So just like we saw um, precipitation reactions with ionic compounds as a way to kind of predict what they are and how they behave and so forth, there is a reaction that metals undergo. It is called oxidation and reduction. Um, and although oxidation reduction is a bigger type of process, we're going to focus just on how it impacts how metals react. So oxidation reduction reactions are also called redox reactions for short. Um, basically, you have metals um, reacting with each other in two separate processes. Half the process is called oxidation, half the process is called reduction. And these processes always have to be coupled together. You cannot have one without the other. Um, and redox reactions are actually a pretty important part of a lot of our lives. You're going to see in the next few slides where they take place. Um, but like I said, even though they have bigger implications in other places around the world and in your life, we're going to focus on just metals for this unit. Um, so just to kind of give you a little perspective, um, cell respiration, photosynthesis, decomposition, combustion, burning of things, um, killing bacteria with bleach, all of these things are oxidation reduction reactions. But the ones we're going to focus on are things like this, something rusting, um, iron rusting, or the Statue of Liberty turning green, or developing um, pictures. So all of these things that you're seeing are a result of oxidation and reduction, making silver in a lamp, doing a, um, a test for alcohol. Uh, a, breath a breathalyzer test. So all of these re rely on oxidation reduction reactions with metals um, for the most part. So let's get into what oxidation and reduction reactions really are. So oxidation is really referred, is really an example of something losing electrons. So yes, if something becomes a cation, it is being oxidized. Um, the charge on the metal is going to increase. It's going to become more positive. And it also means, so like in rusting or with the reaction of the Statue of Liberty, a lot of times oxidation means that that substance is reacting with oxygen. It's gaining oxygen. Um, so rusting is an example of oxidation where iron reacts with oxygen um, to form rust. Reduction, so oxidation was the loss of electrons. Reduction is the opposite. Remember I said they have to go hand in hand? Reduction is the gain of electrons. So in order to make an anion, reduction has to take place. So whenever you create an ionic crystal, you are also doing oxidation reduction. We're not going to look at that too, um, too hard. We're going to focus on the metals at this point, but You've seen, you've seen examples of oxidation reduction before. You create a cation, it undergoes oxidation. You create an anion, it undergoes reduction. And here, we're, whereas oxidation where had the metal increasing in charge, reduction is going to have the metal decreasing in charge. It's going to lose positive charge. So there are two mnemonic devices that you can use um, to help you remember. Um, this, the first one is the one that I kind of grew up with, Leo the lion goes grr. Um, loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction, as you can see. Or uh, one that's come out um, more recently is oil rig. Oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So feel free to make use of whichever one you prefer, um, but it's a, it's a nice way to remember uh, what oxidation and what reduction is. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. Um, you have magnesium going to Mg2 plus plus two electrons. What kind of change is taking place? Is that oxidation or is that reduction? Is magnesium losing electrons or is it gaining electrons? Hopefully you realize that it is losing electrons, so it's undergoing oxidation. How about aluminum three plus going to aluminum? Gain or loss of electrons? Hopefully you realize that is a gain, so that is reduction. Now, you don't always have to go to a neutral atom. You could have 
one ion going to a different expression of that ion. Remember, there, there are several metal ions that you've learned about that can have more than one possible charge. So what about this? Mn2 plus going to Mn4 plus. Is that oxidation or is that reduction? Hopefully you come up with it is oxidation. Okay, so now take a look at these equations. Oxidation is always going to have the electrons on the product side because they're being given off. They're being lost by the starting material. Reduction is always going to have the electrons on the reactant side because those are being added to the material. So that's another way that when you look at a, a reaction, you can tell. So these are examples of what we call half reactions because you're seeing only half of the process. Like I said, oxidation can't happen without something also being reduced. If something loses electrons, something has to gain electrons. So you are seeing half reactions. In a half reaction, there's a couple conditions that have to be true. Um, so when you're writing a half reaction, first off, you have to make sure that the number of atoms on each side are the same. So these three reactions are pretty easy to see. I have one uh, element, one atom of, each, of the element on each side. The other thing that has to be true is the charge on both sides of the equation has to be the same. So it doesn't have to necessarily be neutral. For example, in this last, ex in this last one, total charge on the left is two plus. Over here, total charge on the right, four plus plus two minus adds out to be two plus. So I have two plus here, I have two plus here. So that's showing me that it is balanced in terms of charge. So again, you don't have to have charge being neutral on both sides. You have to have charge being the same on both sides when you write an oxidation or reduction half reaction. So let's have you practice a little bit more. So can you write the half reactions for these three that you see in your organizer? Um, so take a moment, pause the video, and try and write the three half reactions for these three processes. So hopefully you've paused and tried it yourself. Let's check and see how you did. So iron three plus going to iron two plus is the gain of one electron. So hopefully you identified that it was reduction. Potassium ion going potassium metal is also gain of electrons. So once again, that is reduction. And barium atom changing to barium ion, there's a loss of electrons. See the electrons are on the product side. So now that is reduction, oh, I'm sorry, that is oxidation. All right, so we've got these half reactions, but what if we wanna put the reactions together? So how do we add two reactions together to, come, to create a complete redox reaction? So um, you have to have just, the important thing is that you have to have just as many electrons being gained as being lost. So you've got to do some things in order to make sure that electrons balance out. That's the important thing. Um, so what you're going to see is you're going to have one metal donating electrons to a metal cation, and they're essentially going to flip-flop. What was the metal on the reactant side will become the cation on the product side, and what was the cation on the reactant side will become the metal on the product side. So here is an example that we're going to take a look at. So if we have silver nitrate and calcium metal, producing silver plus calcium nitrate. This is an example of um, our, a typical redox reaction that we're gonna work with um, in this unit. Um, one thing we want you to notice is that there's nitrate on both sides of the equation. Well, the nitrate is what we call a spectator ion. It really doesn't participate in the reaction. It simply watches what happens with the metal ions and atoms. So we're going to ignore the um, spectator ion as we move forward. So we're going to worry about silver ion reacting with calcium metal, producing silver metal and calcium ion. Like I said, the nitrate is something that we don't really care too much about. So this is really what's happening. Like I said, silver ion is reacting with calcium metal and it's going to produ pr produce 
silver metal, and calcium ion. So you got two half reactions, silver ion gaining an electron to become silver metal, calcium metal losing two electrons to become calcium ion. So now here's where we have to worry about charges and numbers of electrons. Okay, so we've got our reduction, we've got our oxidation. Um, now we want to think, what do we have to do? Well, I have two electrons in the calcium reaction, but I only have one electron in the silver reaction. So I'm going to have to take that silver reaction and multiply it by two, because now there's two electrons in both half reactions. So I'm just going to carry the calcium reaction through because there's already two electrons. Um, and when I add them together, I am going to get, without the spectator ions, two silver ions plus calcium yields two silver atoms plus calcium ion. There's a complete redox reaction. All right, so I'm going to have you guys try some. So again, pause the video, give these a shot. Remember that when you write the half reactions, you want to make sure that they are uh, the same charge on both sides. But when you add the two half reactions together, you want to make sure that the same number of electrons are being lost as gained. So pause this and work those out on your organizer. OK, so here is the first reaction. Um, cobalt loses two electrons. Potassium only gains one. So I'm going to have to multiply that potassium half reaction by two. So my overall redox reaction is what you see there. So hopefully you got that right. We'll go to the next one, iron plus iron ion plus zinc. We've got the half reaction for iron gaining three electrons. Zinc is losing two electrons. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to multiply that iron reaction by two, that zinc reaction by three, so that I get a total of six electrons total. But then remember when I write the overall reaction, I don't have to show those electrons. They cancel out. They're almost like spectator ions in the end because those electrons cancel out. Six going in, six coming out are going to balance each other out. So here is my net ionic reaction for zinc plus iron three plus. And then finally, the last one, aluminum is going to lose three electrons. Magnesium ion is going to gain two electrons. So once again, aluminum has to be multiplied by two. The magnesium half reaction needs to be multiplied by three. And then when you finish it up, you get the overall net ionic equation that you see there. Now, in all of these examples, there's probably nitrate or some other non-reactive anion floating around so that the whole overall reaction maintains electric neutrality. We can't have a solution that is positively charged, but we don't want to show those nitrate ions because they're really not important. So within the solution, there's a lot of nitrates floating around that we just don't show. And those are the spectator ions that we eliminate when we're writing our net ionic redox reaction equation. All right, so uh, time for you to practice some more stuff. You've got probably some problems that still work on.